Hey guys, it's Dylan. So first of all, my objective with this episode is not at all to convince you one way or another. It is simply to present to you the very best and most accurate data that we have and then let you come to your own conclusion. And I am also hyper aware that people are coming to this episode with very high emotions and all kinds of preconceived notions about this very topic. So all I ask is that for the next 10 minutes or so, you do your very best to lay all of those aside just to hear the data being presented on both sides and then come to a rational, logical conclusion for yourself. And I approach it this way because yes, I am a proponent of Bitcoin, but I also understand the trade-offs that this technology brings to the world. It is definitely not perfect, nor is any person, including Elon, perfect just like everything and everyone else on this planet, so we always have to remember that. But most importantly, I truly believe that this very situation could be a very good thing for Tesla, Bitcoin, and the future of the world and sustainable renewable energy. With more eyes and attention and resources being allocated to solving the issue of Bitcoin mining and the energy use and the cleanliness of it, that is only a good thing for the long-term sustainability of everybody involved. So let's find out what the data has to say. And in case you missed it, no, Tesla will not be selling any Bitcoin and they do intend to use it for transactions as soon as mining transitions to more sustainable energy. But Elon shared another tweet with data from the CBECI. Remember that because we're coming back to this later. But here's the chart with electricity consumption by terawatt hours. And as you can see, the estimated annual consumption for this year is gonna be 148 terawatts. And also note, there are lower bound and upper bound consumptions. So these are all estimates and ranges. Once again, keep that in mind. So first up, let's take a look at a document from the International Energy Agency. To frame this whole conversation, we need this. Diverse methodologies, limited data availability, and highly variable conditions across the industry from mining hardware, electricity costs, and cooling needs make estimating Bitcoin energy use extremely challenging. Therefore, all estimates must be interpreted with caution for both camps. And so by far, the most frequently cited estimate in news media is the Bitcoin Energy Consumption Index, the BECI, which is the source Elon used. This uses a top-down approach that assumes miners spend on average 60% of their revenues on electricity at a rate of 5 cents per kilowatt hour. These key assumptions have been criticized to overestimate electricity consumption. BECI estimates represent the high range of published estimates to date. So, okay, let's keep this in mind. And we have to remember that other studies focus on lower bound estimates that also focus on using the most efficient mining hardware because game theory would tell you that Bitcoin miners want the cheapest cost of electricity and the most efficient hardware to protect the most profits. The next study is from the Congressional Research Service, Bitcoin Blockchain, and the Energy Sector. And I'm showing you this, continuing with that game theory, many miners have determined it's more cost efficient to join mining pools that help disperse the energy and equipment costs and the profits and increase the speed or likelihood of a successful transaction. ASICs used for Bitcoin mining are usually housed in thermally regulated data centers with access to low cost electricity. And they provide this chart, which I think is very helpful. We have the years from 2014 to 2018 and the estimates in terms of megawatts. So 2014, roughly 115 megawatts and 2018, there are a couple different studies for this year, as you can see, but if you take the average roughly 5,000, that would be about a 50X in megawatt consumption per year over the course of about four years. Now, no, you cannot just extrapolate this data. That's really lazy analysis and you'll understand why in a moment, but I think this will help you understand that time period. And as you can see, it definitely fluctuates because in 2017, this one study had numbers that were much lower than the others in that same year. The competitiveness of Bitcoin mining means only miners with the most competitive mining hardware and the lowest electricity costs will persist over time. Some anticipate energy demands will diminish as the reward incentive shifts from discovering new Bitcoin to earning revenue through transaction fees. As a result, some would argue that the energy consumption from Bitcoin mining is a temporary issue. And another thought to remember that eventually all of the Bitcoin mining for new coins will be done. Once we hit 21 million, it's over. And at that point, it will shift to a transaction fee basis 
which will dramatically change this entire conversation. And it is true that in many cases, Bitcoin is often mined in areas with plentiful and affordable renewable energy, not necessarily because these people want to save the planet, but because they want to make the most profits. But once again, that's what game theory says. Often the energy costs are affected by geographical characteristics like proximity to hydroelectric power or lower ambient temperature that reduces the need for cooling. And eventually I will have a segment that gets more in depth with Bitcoin mining and why it consumes so much power and why proof of work and all of these questions that I know you probably have. So subscribe and stay tuned for all of that, but I don't want this video to get too in depth. Looking at some more data from the CBECI, on March 18th, 2021, the annual power consumption of the Bitcoin network was estimated to be 129 terawatt hours. So this chart will help give you a rough idea of energy usage and to put it into context. So China uses 6,543 terawatt hours of annual electricity consumption, roughly, the US 3,900, and the Bitcoin network would be about 129 terawatt hours. And this is where you see all kinds of articles saying that Bitcoin uses more energy than different countries. But remember, this does not consider the energy mix in terms of renewable versus fossil fuel. And that all important energy mix, here we go. So there is a 2020 report by the University of Cambridge which this is it right here. So we're now looking at data from this. Despite increasing transparency and in research on the environmental impact of proof of work mining, the topic is still typically misrepresented in most sources and on both sides of the debate. This is true. Similar to 2018, this year's survey data shows that a significant majority of hashers or miners, 76%, do use renewable energy at least to some degree as part of their energy mix. However, the share of renewables in hashers total energy consumption remains at about 39%. Hydropower is listed as the number one source of energy with 62% of surveyed hashers or miners indicating that their mining operations are powered by hydroelectric energy. Other types of clean energies, wind and solar, rank further down behind coal and natural gas, which respectively account for 38 and 36% of respondents' power sources. So that 75% using renewable energy is just like asking 100 people running mining operations if they use any portion of renewable energy, to which three out of four say yes, that does not mean that they use all renewable energy. The more accurate figure for all power consumed by Bitcoin mining is about 40% that uses completely renewable energy. So here's the chart to prove it. 76% use renewable as part of their mix, but it's the 39% of total energy consumption coming from renewables. And this is a very useful bar chart. As you can see, hydroelectric makes up about 62% of all energy use, followed by coal and natural gas in the upper 30s. And then you can see the rest of the chart below. And then here you have it broken down further by geographic region, which is really important. I'm not gonna get into the details, but go ahead and take a screenshot and zoom in later if you want to know the details. And from the Harvard Business Review, we get an article from Nick Carter. By the way, he's an excellent thought leader in the Bitcoin crypto space. Give him a follow if you don't already. According to the Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance, CCAF, Bitcoin currently consumes around 110 terawatt hours per year, 0.55% of global electricity production. But the real question here is how much energy should a monetary system consume? Also, there's an important distinction between how much energy a system consumes and how much carbon it emits. While determining energy consumption is straightforward, you can't extrapolate the carbon emissions without knowing the energy mix, as we talked about, the makeup of different energy sources. Almost all of the energy used worldwide must be produced relatively close to its end users, but Bitcoin does not have this limitation. It enables miners to use power sources that are inaccessible for other applications. This is what people mean when they say Bitcoin uses otherwise wasted energy. And this paragraph is so important. Many journalists and academics talk about Bitcoin's high per transaction energy cost, something you've probably seen tweeted, but this is very misleading. The vast majority of Bitcoin's energy consumption happens during the mining process. Once coins have been issued, the energy required to validate transactions is actually minimal. As such, simply looking at Bitcoin's total energy draw to date and dividing that number by the number of transactions does not make any sense. Most of that energy was used to mine Bitcoin, not to support transactions. 
And that leads us to the final critical misconception that the energy cost associated with mining Bitcoin will continue to grow exponentially. This is not the case for that fundamental reason. And he reiterates that thinking long-term, once the coins have been issued, the energy required to validate transactions is minimal. And why this could be a good thing, as renewable options like solar become more efficient and more viable for mining, Bitcoin could end up serving as a serious incentive for miners to build out these technologies and to push the industry forward which is exactly what we all want and need. It's up to the crypto community to acknowledge and address these environmental concerns, to work in good faith to reduce Bitcoin's carbon footprint, and ultimately demonstrate that the societal value Bitcoin provides is worth the resources needed to sustain it. And yes, ARK Invest has chimed in on this very topic. I won't spend a lot of time here because this is more of a theoretical idea, but it's important nonetheless. In this piece, we hypothesize and illustrate how Bitcoin mining can increase the overall share of renewable energy provision to the grid, potentially further skewing both global and Bitcoin mining energy mixes towards renewables. The logic of the model is such that it is optimized to prioritize meeting grid demand. That is, the energy from the sun will not be used to mine Bitcoin unless the demand from the grid is first met. Once grid demand is met, the model assesses whether it's more profitable to store energy in the battery or to mine Bitcoin based on trailing profitability levels. Ultimately, we hope that this model can serve as a tool to help others understand how the addition of Bitcoin mining as an option to solar and other renewable energy developers could allow for more reliable power provision at a similar return on capital level. And these links are below. And I also know that people that think Bitcoin is useless, it's a Ponzi scheme, and it has no real world use case, they're not gonna think Bitcoin should use any energy. And then there's the other camp that sees that Bitcoin is literally freeing people from monetary oppression. It's giving people a way out. It's giving the freedom and the power back to the end user in this peer-to-peer -peer decentralized monetary hard money, programmable money system. And that has immense value, especially in third world countries, which is why people in America struggle sometimes to see the benefits because they don't have problems like other places in the world. And of course that camp would argue that Bitcoin can consume all kinds of energy because of the value that it provides to society. And we're always going to have these two camps. I just want to let the data and the truth guide your decision, not misinformation, misunderstanding, and taking low hanging fruit. And kind of a hard truth for us Tesla bulls, at the end of the day, Tesla and Bitcoin both are using grid energy, which is 60% coal and natural gas in the United States. How is one morally praiseworthy and the other morally blameworthy? But the question of why Tesla chose to backtrack its decision to accept Bitcoin as payment, there are a couple different options. Number one, Tesla and team didn't do enough due diligence on the Bitcoin mining situation. I find this very hard to believe. Number two, Elon is being pressured by the board and investors to back away from Bitcoin because of the uncertainty and the cleanliness of the operation as a whole, which I do think is a very likely scenario, especially with their application to apply for these renewable energy credits. And as we have more money coming into the pipeline in terms of EV credits, of course, Tesla wants to look as clean and green as possible in the months to come. A third option would be Elon is actually playing chess and did this to move the market down in order to accumulate more Bitcoin. I also think this is very unlikely, but it's an option. And the fourth would be Elon doing this as an extra motivation and incentive for the Bitcoin community to move faster toward renewable energy, which would align exactly with Tesla's mission. And once again, I think would be a very bullish thing for everyone and everything involved in this conversation. But please share any and all of your thoughts below. And I'll leave you with two things. This tweet from Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, Elon, are we finally going to have the Cardano convo? Come to my farm in Longmont with Kimball, got sweet tea and mini donkeys. I love Ada, I love Cardano, I think Charles is incredible. I really hope Cardano gets the credit it deserves from this whole situation, but I'm gonna leave you with a short clip from Michael Saylor. Thank you for watching, please like the video if you learned anything new. Thank you to all of my patrons, I hope you have a great day. If you take all the energy used in the Bitcoin network, it amounts to 25 basis points of all the wasted energy. So one quarter of 1% of the wasted energy in the world offers the hope of a decent life to 8 billion people and solves an economic problem. And, uh, and but the, the 25 basis points is, is of the wasted energy because the Bitcoin network is the bitter of last resort for all energy. So if you, 
eliminated Bitcoin from the world and you robbed the billions of people of a decent chance at a decent life, then you wouldn't stop any waste. You're still going to waste 50,000 terawatt hours of energy.